Ladies and gentlemen, it's only fitting to represent all the coaches who have coached for Coach Snyder. Please welcome the Hall of Fame coach in his own right, Bob Stoops. Kansas. Uh, my wife and I, Carol and I, absolutely loved our time here. Uh, seven years here with Coach Snyder. I think Coach, he got me on board maybe in the first two, three weeks uh, that Coach was here. And uh, what a blessing, you know, and uh, so many, so many great memories and so many great relationships and friends. So we're, we're elated to be back with you. And, Every man a wildcat, even me tonight, all right? So, that's right. A uh, couple of special things about being here tonight. Uh, one of them, you know, you guys, everyone knows Coach Snyder's notorious about his long work hours, work days, and, and in fact, uh, I'm just happy I don't have to be in the office at midnight tonight here before working. In fact, one, one night, <laughs> Jim Levitt and I were going over something on the grease board and the chalkboard back then. And coach knocked on the knocked on the door and said, "Hey, it was 11:30 at night, right?" He said, "You guys go home early tonight." <laughs> and Jim and I kind of, you know, chuckled like, "Yeah, okay, like he's kidding." And Coach looked at us like, "What are you laughing about?" Like he he meant it, you know. So. But the other thing I'm, I'm excited to be here tonight, I, I don't have to deal with them tomorrow in a game. You know, I've, I've got a unique, uh, you know, I, Kevin was talking about all of coaches' innovation. Well, I loved it for the seven years I was here, and I had to deal with it the next so many years. Gosh, you talk about pulling your hair out. Uh, like you said, the wildcat, option this, option that back running down the middle instead of blocking somebody I and mean, they found every way to score a touchdown you possibly think of and, and like I said it's I have so many great memories here coming back but also have some of my worst nightmares with coach now that's right December 6 2003 what night listen got to give it to coach whipped us just whipped us and it, it's it's one of my worst Believe me, I, I think about it today. <laughs> and then dealing with Tyler Lockett, the other guy. That was a nightmare. I think we got by by the skin of our teeth once or twice, maybe once here, but they throw it to him one more time, we wouldn't have won. So, uh, but anyway, it's, uh, it's fun to be here. Coach and I go way back, and I, if everybody kind of knows this, but we go all the way back to 1979. Longer than about it, almost almost everybody in this room. I was a young player at Iowa, safety, freshman year, and Coach Snyder comes in with a great group of coaches with Hayden Fry. And I'm just a young guy, you know, uh, trying to make my way onto the field, and Coach Snyder reinvents our offense, and, uh, you know, we, we become, a, you know, our third year together, we go to the Rose Bowl. With co Big Ten champs go to the Rose Bowl, and, uh, and I was saying this to Coach just the other uh, yesterday that he and I through so many games, you think about it, was, so I, I was a player with Coach Snyder for four years at Iowa, and then I was a young assistant there as a graduate assistant, volunteer assistant, couldn't make a dime, but I was an assistant there for five years. And I used to run the defense, coordinate the scout team defense against Coach Snyder every day. And, and, and he, he couldn't have been more wonderful. And then, and then uh, I remember after those practices, coach had never eaten. He just lived off of coffee. If anyone could live off of coffee, it was coach. Never had anything else. But I would always bring him a styrofoam box of food. I'd go, I, I wasn't missing any meals back then. And I, I'd bring coach whatever it was. I, and I'd say, hey, coach, here you go. And he'd go, he'd smile, thanks, Bobby. I put it on his desk. I'd be leaving an hour or two later. Coach is still there watching tape, running that film back and forth. Hadn't even touched the styrofoam box. 
But he thanked me every time. And like I said, I don't think he ever ate it once. But I, I would always make sure I brought him something to eat. Because uh, I, I, I thought one of these times he'll break down and maybe tear into that box. But, uh, but anyway, um, again, he and I, and that, so that's nine years together at Iowa and a lot of football games. And then I, I'd go nine months to Kent. Uh, and I finally got a full-time job. And then Coach Snyder calls me within a couple of weeks of him accepting the job at Kansas State and offers me the secondary job here at Kansas State. And so now, for seven years, we're competing against everybody. And that's another, that's a lot of games. I tallied them up. That's about 80 to 100 games. He and I have walked out on, out of the tunnel, out onto a field, ready to compete, you know, with each other. And, and, and that, that's pretty neat when you do that. Us that are in the fraternity of coaches and what we have to deal with, the emotion of it, the fight, it's exciting. And, uh, but he, Coach and I have been through a lot and, uh, in, in that competition together. And then it's kind of odd, then I have to be on the other side of it, you know, at, at Oklahoma. And I never liked that. I never liked competing against family or close People like Coach Snyder, I, mean, I had to play Iowa one time, Coach Ferentz. You, you just don't like that, you know, because we all have such um, challenges in, in, in such a fight together. And again, after being in so many battles together, you hate to have to, to go against each other. But, uh, but it's pretty unique to have fought together as, as much as we have. And no, I don't think unless you've been, if we're in the position Coach Snyder was, us as assistant coaches, those first two, three years, you talk about a challenge. I don't want to, Dr. Weefall said it well, how, diff, how poor a shape we were in. And I don't want to say it anymore because hopefully that'll never, obviously never happen again. But when you, you, you lived it, you have no idea. I think our first scrimmage or time we went out to do a team session, coach, I think we had four defensive linemen. Period. And two of them, I think, were walk-ons. And we, we, we'd be in a team session, and you know, and, you, and all of a sudden, you gotta take a break. You gotta hose them down, water them down, cool them down, get them some water. That's all we had. We didn't have like four other guys come in and let them take a break. There was no one else to take a break. So it, it was as bad as it can be. And to this day, I promise you, I, uh, to this day, of all the wins I've been a part of as a player or as a, a coach in Oklahoma, Florida, anywhere, one of my all-time top couple wins will always be the North Texas State win when Frank Hernandez got that ball in the corner of the end zone. Always. Yes. Now you got to remember, we're winning think we're going to win the game, all we got to do is stop them one more time. I'm the secondary coach, right? I got three guys on this wide receiver at North Texas State. I'll be darned, all my guys fall down, they catch a touchdown with like a minute to go in the game. You talk about, oh, I fell to my knees on the press box, and I'm like, I can't tell you what I said, Mitch, but you probably heard me. But then we come back, coach and Coach Miller, Bill Miller, here, I don't know if Bell's here, but they march down the field, we throw that corner route to Frank Hernandez in the end zone. And I mean, I'm, 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 a, I don't, I'm not real emotional, I'm almost crying. I mean, I'm swinging my wife around on the field. We're, we rang the victory bell, as it been wrong said, we rang the victory bell, tore down the goal post, took it down to Aggieville. We beat North Texas State, but we won. We won. And that started, that started it all. And, and with that, because of my belief in Coach Snyder, when I came here, everyone tried to tell me, and you know what? Even the community in that first year, everyone wanted to convince us you couldn't do it. I never, ever doubted it because of Coach Snyder. He knew how to win. We did it at Iowa, we were gonna do it here. And it was because of that faith and that belief in Coach Snyder, never did I believe once, we did, at all, we were gonna win. And then little by little, we did. You know, at the, again, with, with coaches 
you know, meticulous attention to detail. We won. Um, you know, it's, you know, Coach is big with his family. Uh, Sharon, you know, wonderful, wonderful person. I've loved getting to, gotten to know through the years. And Sean, been able to coach next to Sean through the years. And, and all of Coach's family, and I know that's it's, it's Snyder Family Stadium. Coach is all about that, and, uh, and it's really special. I know what a difference he's made in this community and, and around the state. And I would warn all of you now, he's got a little more time. Your phone's going to be ringing, and you're going to be in some meetings. Whether it be family meetings or community leaders here, you better be ready to have coaches who are not going to sit idly by. But, um, but the example Coach has given through the years is one of incredible uh, determination, fight, and find a way. And don't let that, that suit and that quiet, nice, soft demeanor fool you. Believe me, he is a bulldog. And I've always loved that about him. He comes across, and he is, he's a, he's a gentleman, he really is. But he is a fighter, and if you're a competitor against him, you better be strapped up. And I went through the years, we've had some success, and I, I, I don't tell anyone, people would ask me, how do you play Kansas State? And I, listen, I was always for Kansas State, as long as they weren't playing us. So I wouldn't say much, but to my coaches and my team, when I said, if you're playing Kansas State, your ass better be ready to play. You're, otherwise, you won't get it kicked because that's how they do it. They're physical. They're tough. Coach always has his team ready to play. A few mistakes. They, I mean, they're, they're hard to deal with. And I think whenever we did have success, it was we, we had such respect for them that we were ready for it. And we knew we had to be at the top of our game to have the chance to win. But uh, forever, uh, I will always coach, and I'm glad I did this before Coach retired for the second time. I think I sent Coach a couple years ago a, a letter. Uh, I think I emailed it to Joanne. Joanne's out here, and to give to Coach that I wanted him to know how grateful I was for the opportunities he had given me. It was my first big young assistant coach having a job in the, in the, in the Big A. And then after a couple of years, an opportunity to be a coordinator, a co-coordinator with Jim Levitt. And, and he gave me some great opportunities and I learned so much and grew so much in this seven years here. And it, it was really a, a, a huge uh, stepping stone for my life to be able to go on and end up becoming a head coach. So I will uh, forever be grateful to coach for those opportunities you gave me. And I know I speak for all the assistant coaches you've had, so many great ones through the years. Uh, we're all grateful for the opportunity to work in such a great place and, and to work with you. And, and uh, we all love you, Coach. I uh, really appreciate you. And again, every man a wildcat.